So I was told that uh, TEDx usually invites young people and young men to uh, young men and women to share ideas, and I was wondering, what am I doing there? But uh, it was great to see so many young speakers, a lot of them younger than my kids. My kids, by the way, are Sriram kids. They both uh, did uh, school at uh, Sriram in Gurgaon, Mulsari campus. Uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to uh, I'm very happy that they did that, and uh, they're, doing, they're doing rather well for themselves now. But coming right back to the topic, you know, what are we here for? So we're here talking about inclusivity, diversity, and I'm here to tell you that sport has a major, major role to play in that effort of making India a more inclusive and diverse country. Um, there are 500 million Indians under the age of 18. So compare that to the population of the United States, which is 330 million total. We have 500 million Indians under the age of 18. What is it that can help shape this country's demographic dividend? And I'm here to try and convince you that sport can play an extremely important role in that process. So uh, sport has been my life. I'll show you one uh, photo. So this uh, photo was taken on the 12th of August, just about 12 days ago. This is in Spain, and uh, that's me in the center with the trophy. I was asked to be the non-playing captain of the Asia-Pacific youth team that played a match against Europe. It's a match that happens every two years, and we were very fortunate to win the match and beat Europe in Europe, which uh, was quite a challenge. <laughs> um, but what does that have to do with diversity? So I want to tell you that this team of 12 boys, they're all between the ages of 16 and 21. Uh, the, you know, from Japan, South Korea, China, Taiwan, New Zealand, Australia, Vietnam, Vietnam, and Malaysia. And then there was me from India. And I had never met any of these boys before uh, you know, the Monday of the week of the event, and we had two days to get the team together, uh, get them practicing together, working together, knowing, uh, getting to understand each other, pair up together as doubles teams, etc. cetera. And, uh, and we managed to do that, and it was because of the language of sport that these boys, some of them couldn't speak the same language, you know, the Koreans and the Japanese particularly had a tough time. And we were able to come together as a team because we all spoke the language of sport, of our sport, golf, and it was a magical experience how these boys all bonded and became like brothers to each other in a matter of two or three days. And by the end of the week, um, I mean, I, there's a lot of other photos of our, um, of our celebrations, but it was just a magical experience, and it was my privilege to be part of that. Um, and I, I just wanted to relate that to the fact that sport breaks all barriers in the world you can come together from all over the world, and if you share a love of sport and participate in sport, it doesn't matter where you're from, what your religion is, what your age is, in fact, you all share the same bond. And I would like you to all go back thinking of how you can make physical activity and sport a much more important part of your lives than perhaps it is today. I'm sure a lot of you are active sports persons, a lot of, I, I think, you know, the school, particularly this school, and the Sriram schools in general, particularly encourage a lot of sports participation, which is fantastic. But I think there's a lot more we can do. Um, to give you an idea of, you know, how big sport can be in this country, imagine, you know, 500 million Indians, we need to include more of them in the economy. We need to, um, upskill them, we want to make a lot of people, a lot of these 500 million don't come from backgrounds like you have, they don't have the education you have. But by participating in sport, perhaps being alongside you guys in a sports team one day, or you embracing these people uh, who don't have the privileges you have, it can change their lives. It's like upskilling. 
and bringing people into the workforce. So I'll show you a couple of, so, so that is one in terms of, um, so getting people included in the Indian economy, I propose that we do it using sport as a means to increase their confidence, make them feel uh, like they belong. So this is just one data point that by getting 10% increase in uh, India's female workforce, we could add $552 billion to the Indian economy. So not enough women play sport and not enough women are in the workforce. We work closely in, uh, we do fundraising through golf for an NGO called Magic Bus, and they have brought one million girls from slums into the workforce, or rather, they have brought them out of their homes, got them into schools, got them into education, using sport as the first vehicle to bring them out of their homes and increase their confidence. They do it using soccer, and now they've been using tennis, and they will be using golf as well soon. But just through getting girls out of their homes playing soccer, they've actually managed to get one million girls to convince their families to let them go to schools, because first they had to get them out of the house. So this is the kind of impact that inclusivity can have on the Indian economy. Upskilling, so I'm trying to relate making people feel like they belong, like upskilling. Because when you, when you participate in sport, you learn so many skills which are essential for uh, you know, your success. I mean, you've all heard this, leadership, overcoming obstacles, overcoming emotional ups and downs, um, being part of a team, being you know, disciplined, persevering in the face of obstacles. These are all skills that you need to have to survive and prosper in the work, workplace. So upskilling can add 570 billion to India's economy by 2030. So that's a World Economic Forum report. So why I'm telling you all this is because I want you to think that sport can play a major role in helping people get included in the economy, of helping girls and women get included in the economy. Here's another, uh, here's another data point, because this is a spin-off of being in sport, right? Health. So you've heard the expression, health is wealth. Well, here's a scary statistic. In India, obesity has increased from 9.3 to 23 percent in 2021 for men, and from 12.6 to 24 percent for women in the last, you know, eight years, seven, eight years. And in the urban centers like NCR, it's a higher percentage. So what, what does that tell you? I mean, obviously sport can have a major effect in, in making people healthier, and these are the costs of obesity. 8.4 billion as direct healthcare costs, 109 billion in premature mortality, 176 million non-medical costs, 2.2 billion in absenteeism, and 9 billion in reduced productivity. I mean, these are just scary numbers, right? So the reason, again, I'm telling you all these things and <laughs> giving you so much gyan is because I want you to to make sport and physical activity a much more important part of your lives than perhaps it is today. And I want you to also recognize that sport could even be a way of life for a lot of you. You know, in, uh, India is at, a, I would say, ground zero when it comes to sport and physical activity at the moment. There are pioneers and, you know, Sam, who's been to Mount, uh, you know, the top of Mount Everest, who spoke earlier today, uh, you know, mountaineering is a great sport, but the percentage of Indians who participate in that compared to, let's say, in the West, in Europe, and, and the United States is minuscule. So we're at ground zero in terms of sports participation today. And I want to tell you that 
in the US, sport constitutes between 2 to 3 percent of their GDP. Now, if you just translate those numbers to India's GDP, which is about uh, three trillion dollars today, that could mean that if if sport in India as an industry, and I'll explain what that means, uh, the industry of sport, right? If we could reach two to three percent of our GDP, it would mean that sport as an industry could contribute between 60 to 90 billion dollars a year to the Indian economy. And I want you all, as young people, to think that what an opportunity sport offers all of us in terms of, you know, think of it, you want to be a, a, a sports person, you want to be a coach, you want to get into technology that enables sports, you want to, um, you know, get into the business of sporting equipment or, or running sports clubs. There's, there's a huge industry out there that's waiting to happen in India. We are at ground zero, we could get to 60 to 90 billion dollars of an industry size today, and that's a rub off uh, you know, to, to choosing sport as a more important part of your lives in so many different ways. So, um, you know, the diversity and inclusivity like you see here, sensitivity, I mean, nothing can be more sensitive than going up to your fellow teammate who's missed a goal and saying, don't worry, we'll get them next time. You know, just lifting somebody up like that and making them feel part of your team, maybe a kid who's not been chosen to be on part of any team, you call them in, let them be part of your basketball team or whichever team you're on, make them feel empowered, get them excited, and, and it changes their lives. It can change their lives completely. So that is the sensitivity training that sport can bring to, uh, to, to the Indian, uh, you know, Indian culture and society. Integrity, I mean, integrity through sport is you know, self-explanatory, really, because it's all about you knowing how hard you work, you believing in yourself, you're being true to yourself. And sport teaches that like probably nothing else. And of course, uh, pursuit of excellence, that goes without saying when you decide to get good at something like sport, like Karishma said, if your mind can believe it, your body can achieve it, right? And sport teaches that probably better than anything else. And I'd like to hope that Karishma, when she was growing up and she was participating in sport, some of those qualities that she learned through sport helped her cope and, and become the person she is today. And of course, <laughs> so, uh, and finally, of course, heritage. You might wonder what does sport have to do with heritage, but India has a huge heritage in sport. And I'd like, you know, I mean, especially, uh, although India is a cricket crazy country, Hockey was our national sport for many, many years. India won like six or eight gold medals in the Olympics in hockey. And it's fantastic that a, a state like Orissa today has adopted hockey for the last 10 years and made it their sport. And they are pumping in hundreds of crores into hockey and, you know, look at the result. Just last week, India won the Asia, Asia Cup in hockey. And uh, that's our heritage. And, and a sense of heritage is what we need, and again, sport can bring that out. I mean, if you go to America, you see the fervor that the college teams evoke, because everybody wants to support their college in their area, right? They want to support uh, their high school team. We don't have that yet in India. We don't have those iconic college teams where everybody wants to go to a particular university because they have the best football team or they have the best basketball team. Right? That's what people talk about in the United States, and that's what drives the investment in those sports teams by their universities, because their reputations are governed by the quality of their sports teams sometimes, except the Ivy League maybe, but everybody else knows all the different universities, whether it's Michigan or, or California, UCLA, Stanford. So, well, Stanford is Ivy League, but, but a lot of the universities, their reputations depend on their sports teams. So we need to create that culture and... Um, I would just like to again reiterate that make sport part of your lives and think about the dividend that can pay off. India's future could well depend on it. Thank you.